the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, the Colombo port recognized as the world's fastest growing port in the first quarter of 2024 due to its remarkable operational performance and significant growth rate. The Japanese ambassador to Sri Lanka highlights concerns regarding the Sri Lankan visa system and the country's investment landscape, emphasizing the need for improvements in both areas. The stock exchange remains on the downward trajectory with the market posting losses for the second straight day this week. And Apple relies on chips designed by Google over Nvidia to build two key components of its artificial intelligence software infrastructure. A very good evening and thank you for joining us. The Secretary to the Ministry of Ports, Naval and Aviation Services, KDS Ruan Chandra, emphasized that Alpha Liner, a prominent research publication in the shipping industry, recognized Colombo Port as the world's fastest growing port in the first quarter of 2024 due to its remarkable operational performance and 23.6% growth rate. Addressing a press briefing held under the series titled Two Years of Progress and Way Forward, held at the Presidential Media Center yesterday, Secretary to the Minister of Ports, Shipping and Aviation Services further elaborated that the port generated an income of 50 million US dollars in the first quarter of 2024, emphasizing that the various trade union actions taken in the past did not impede this progress. In 2023, the Sri Lanka Port Authority reported a profit of 100 million US dollars and in just the first quarter of 2024, it has already made a profit of 50 million US dollars. All four terminals have significantly contributed to these operations with ongoing efforts to enhance their operational capacity. He stated that the construction of the Eastern Container Terminal and the Western Terminal is in progress, with the Western Terminal expected to begin operations in February 2025. Additional development work is underway at the Eastern Terminal and Northern Port. Meanwhile, development projects are being carried out at Trincomalee, Gol and Kankasanthore ports. In the next couple of years, you will see that you know, there will be logistics centres coming up in the port of Colombo, a state-of-the-art logistics centres. That is critical for us to have becoming a maritime hub. Um, and alongside that, we also be, you will also see uh, the East Continent Terminal and the West Continent Terminal, uh, which uh, within the port of Colombo, uh, becoming uh, operational, at least being partially operational by the end of this year. Uh, the equipment and of course the, the, the infrastructure has already been, you know, is already in progress and uh, that will of course definitely add to our present capacity and we'll see, be able to accommodate more and of course uh, de you know, uh, attract more uh, business in the future, uh, in the years to come. Uh, by the year 2025 and later 2026, the first quarter, we'll have the East Current Terminal and the West Current Terminal fully operational and with that we'll see our capacity uh, increasing by almost uh, twofold. Of course, you know, today we are doing about 8 million TUs, but I would say uh, we go up to at least 50 million TUs um, by 2016, the first or second quarter, latest. During a special presentation on Other Than a 24, the Japanese ambassador to Sri Lanka, His Excellency Mizukoshi Hideaki, addressed the current visa system in Sri Lanka. He noted that many Japanese tourists find the existing visa process inconvenient, which may deter tourism from Japan. Ambassador Hideaki also emphasized the need for Sri Lanka to take robust measures against corruption within its business landscape to attract more Japanese investors to the Sri Lankan market. I think. Um the new e-visa systems, Yes. Uh, lots of people are complaining it's a bit <laughs> difficult, so I think it's better yeah. uh, uh, to be uh, improved. But one thing that I want to emphasize is that uh, one obstacle uh, for Japanese investors to come to Sri Lanka is, um, is um, a kind of transparency okay. of uh, procedures, administrative procedures, and uh, more bluntly saying, you know, corruption. Corruption. Yeah. So those things will prevent Japanese investors. There's a lot of uh, effort know? made by the government to, uh, you know, stop curb corruption. Yeah, that's like very that. important. Very important and we would like to support it uh, very strongly. <laughs> 
State Minister of Finance Dr. Ranjit Siembalapitiya stated that the budget deficit has decreased by 63.8% in the first five months of this year compared to the same period last year. He highlighted that as of May 31st, 2023, the budget deficit was 1,014 billion rupees, whereas this year the deficit for the same period is reported to be 366 billion rupees. The minister emphasized that this improvement is a result of the country moving forward with proper economic policies. Minister Siambala Pitiya made these remarks while attending a ceremony organized by the Customs Department to award certificates to authorized economic operators. This event provided certificates to 31 leading institutions, allowing them to carry out import and export activities without custom inspections. The opportunity was granted after years of monitoring their import and export activities. The minister stressed that the Sri Lankan customs consistently meets the revenue targets set by the government, making a significant contribution to the country's economy. A top aviation official said that Sri Lanka's second international airport in Mattala is in operation without any flights being grounded amid the tourism off-season. Meanwhile, the country will hold key units to related to the national security and rescue when handing over its Chinese-built airport operations to a consortium between Indian and Russian firms. The country is in process of handing over the 209 million Chinese-funded and built Mattala airport to a consortium between Shaori Aeronautics Private Limited of India and airports of region management company of Russia. Matale Airport has never made any profit since operations started in 2013 and has incurred a loss of 3 billion rupees annually. Atul Galkatiya, chairman of the state-owned airport and aviation services Sri Lanka Private Limited, told reporters that there are no flights now and their staff is idling. He added that they have to keep the staff because it's a requirement to run the airport even if there is no flight. The Indian-Russian consortium was chosen despite the United States having informed Sri Lankan government about a U.S. sanction on key stakeholder of the Moscow firm. Mr. Galkatiya said that they are waiting to clear some technical matters and will be handing over the airport very soon. He said the deal will see all the cost of the airport borne by the consortium and the Sri Lankan government will not charge any money for the first three years. The consortium is expected to develop the airport up to 400,000 passengers in the fourth year. Sri Lanka has appointed five companies to maintain shops selling tea in the Katunayaka Bandaranaike International Airport departure waiting area. A cabinet statement said that bids were called under the national competitive bidding process and eight bidders submitted bids. The contracts were awarded to Euroscan Exports Private Limited, English Tea Shop Limited, Sunshine Consumer Lanka Limited, UHE Exports Private Limited, Ceylon Royalties Private Limited. The companies were recommended by the Technical Evaluation committee and the standing procurement committee appointed by the cabinet let's go for a short commercial break updates from the stock market right after this this is the nightly business report welcome back to the nightly business report the stock exchange continues its negative trend as the market recorded losses for the second consecutive day this week. Both indices ended today's session with losses, further solidifying the persistent negative trend. To get the latest updates on today's trading, let's go to Tarusha Ashokar, joining us now from First Capital Holdings. Today, the All Share Price Index fell to a four-month low of 11,510.76 marking its fourth consecutive session of losses with a significant intraday decline of 108 points. Similarly, the S&P SL20 index also experienced a sharp drop, losing 35 points to close at 3,333.82. Market sentiment remained subdued, though there was a slight uptick in participation compared to recent sessions. Heavy selling pressure was evident across the entire banking sector and selective blue chip stocks including John Kills Holdings and LOLC Holdings which contributed to the index decline into the 11,500 level. Today also marked the commencement of the commercial bank rights issue which saw a notable price decline on the counter. As negative sentiment persisted, turnover was modest at 5 558 million rupees with significant contributions from the capital goods, banking and diversified financial sectors. 
Moving on, top gainers for the day include Tess Agro Non-Voting, Durden's Hospital and BPPL Holdings, while top losers for the day are SMB Finance, Non-Voting, Nation Lanka Finance and SMB Finance Voting Share. The central bank's bond auction was held today and to get the insights and the outcomes of today's auction, let's connect with Ranjan Ranatunga from First Capital Holdings. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka at the Treasury bond auction held today partially upsetted a care $146 billion from the offered $200 billion. The part acceptance of the offered came in the midst of higher bids following the incline in longer tenure bonds seen during the past weeks. Furthermore, this also contributed towards the higher weighted average yields for today's auction for the maturities. Going into details, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka fully accepted the offer of 80 billion from the 2028 maturity at a weighted average yield of 12.07, while the 2030 and the 33 maturities were partially accepted at 40 billion and 25 billion, respectively. Moreover, the weighted average yields for the 2030 and the 33 maturities stood at 12.55 and 12.83 respectively, higher to the yesterday's secondary market trades. Meanwhile, the secondary market continued to remain on mute during today's trading amidst high receptions levels for the CBSL and lower demand. Going forward, we expect the current lethargic sentiment in the secondary market to continue as investors look for direction and wait for positive news for rates to adjust downwards, offering opportunities for trades. Meanwhile, contributing to the direction of trades, overnight liquidity in the banking sector continued to remain volatile, yet in the positive territory at 107 billion, down from the peak of 200 billion recorded as the end of May 2024. Gold prices edged higher today as investors awaited the Federal Reserve's commentary on its monetary policy and a deluge of U.S. economic data due later in the week for more clues on the pace and scale of the Fed's interest rate cuts. Spot gold was up 0.2% at $2,387.89 per ounce and U.S. gold futures rose 0.3% at $2,384.80. The Fed is anticipated to maintain current interest rates at the conclusion of its two-day meeting tomorrow but may signal potential policy easing as soon as September citing inflation nearing its 2% target. Market focus is also on a series of US employment data scheduled to be released this week including the pivotal non-farm payrolls report due on Friday. <laughs> Oil steadied today near its lowest level since early June as worries about demand in China were balanced by a government pledge of policy measures for the economy and the prospect of lower U.S. crude and product inventories. Brent crude rose by 8 cents or 0.1 percent to $79.86 a barrel and it fell intraday to $79.34, the lowest since the 10th of June. U.S. crude was down 12 cents or 0.2 percent at $75.69. A raft of disappointing economic news from China, the world's largest crude importer, has been weighing on commodity prices. China's manufacturing activity likely shrank for a third month in July. <laughs> Let's take a short commercial break now and when we get back, a look at the corporate world right after this. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Brokerage Morgan Stanley predicts that the new Melco Resorts and Entertainment City of Dreams project in central Colombo could benefit from burgeoning wealth and outbound tourism from India, with its casino probably helping to generate around 50% of the property's earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization. This year, Melco Resorts announced a joint venture with John Kills Holdings PLC, the largest conglomerate listed on the Colombo Stock Exchange, to include a casino in the $1 billion-plus integrated resort project located in Sri Lanka's capital. During the group's first quarter results conference call, Melco executives expressed confidence in the $125 million US dollar investment into the venture, considering it a small wager with the prospect of substantial returns. 
After discussing the project with John Keels, Morgan Stanley analysts issued a dispatch with key takeaways which describes the potential of the Indian tourism market and the property's profitability. Data cited by the dispatch show that tourism in Sri Lanka has seen a roller coaster journey with significant disruptions in the recent years due to a terror attack in 2019 and the COVID-19 pandemic through 2023. However, the market is on a rebound with tourist visitation peaking at a 2.3 million in 2018, of which Indian nationals represent 18%. As of May 2024, visitation levels have recovered to 88% of the 2018 peak, indicating a robust recovery. Singer PLC, the innovative benchmark and leader in the consumer electronics and home appliances industry, is poised to revolutionize the two-wheel driving experience by introducing the new Lima ELO 7 electric bike to Sri Lanka. Marking a new era of stylish, smooth and sustainable ride, Lima ELO 7 is an elegant electric bike available at an extremely affordable price at Sing Outlets. It is an ideal blend of sleek design and eco-friendly technology backed by the trusted credentials of Singer in Sri Lanka. Committing on its trial-blazing new product, the CEO of Singer PLC Mahesh Vijayvardhana say that they are proud to shake up the two-wheel market with the introduction of the Lima ELO 7 electric bike. Electric versions of bikes and cars are being embraced globally as the future of transportation essential for the sustainability of the planet. Singer has a long history of introducing a reliable innovation to the market. The Lima Yellow 7 promises to enhance urban mobility and have a positive impact on the environment without compromising on style. BitGet, the leading cryptocurrency exchange and Web3 company, is excited to announce its first ever meetup in Sri Lanka aimed at spreading awareness about crypto and blockchain technology for its users in the country. The event will take place on the 3rd of August from 6 p.m. onwards at Mont Blanc NH Collection in Colombo. This gathering is open to the entire crypto community. This includes opinion leaders, influencers, crypto traders and blockchain enthusiasts. Attendees will have the opportunity to participate in the insightful discussions on cryptocurrency, blockchain and emerging technologies. The event will also feature a session introducing BitGet, providing valuable insights into its offering and vision. In addition to the engaging discussions, the meetup will offer a unique networking opportunity for attendees to connect with the like-minded individuals and the industry experts. To add to the excitement, multiple prices will be up for grabs, making the evening both informative and rewarding. BitGet's meetups are part of the exchange's broader initiative to connect with local communities and promote crypto education. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Most Asian stocks fell today, reversing a rebound from the prior session as sentiment remained on edge before interest rates decisions from the Bank of Japan and the Federal Reserve in the coming days. Japan's Nikkei 225 index fell 0.9%, as did the broader topics, amid uncertainty over the BOJ's upcoming rate decision. China's Shanghai Shenzhen CCI 300 and Shanghai Composite indexes fell 0.9% and 0.8% respectively. Hong Kong's Hang Seng index slid 1.2% to an over three-month low. South Korea's Kospi meanwhile lost 1% and Australia's AXX200 fell 0.8%. The S&P 500 closed barely higher after a choppy trading session as investors held their breath ahead of a raft of big technology company earnings, a Federal Reserve policy decision on interest rate cuts and key U.S. labor data all due this week. U.S. stocks finished mixed Monday in choppy trading as investors await the results of a Federal Reserve meeting and earnings from several mega-cap technology companies later this week. The Dow closed down one-tenth of one percent, while the S&P 500 and Nasdaq added a tenth. Among the companies posting quarterly earnings are Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, and Meta Platforms. Their results will offer clues on whether technology sector stocks are vulnerable or can extend their recent rallies. 
Stocks on the move Monday included one mega cap, Tesla, after Morgan Stanley added the electric car maker's shares to its top pick, U.S. Autos list. And McDonald's climbed nearly 4% after it said its $5 meal deal, which launched late in June, was popular among customers shying away from higher priced items. As a result, the fast food giant reported a surprise drop in sales, its first in 13 quarters. An Apple research paper showed that the company relied on chips designed by Google rather than industry leader NVIDIA to build two key components of its artificial intelligence software infrastructure for its forthcoming suite of AI tools and features. Apple unveiled plans for its artificial intelligence products back in June. With Apple intelligence, powerful intelligence goes hand in hand with powerful privacy. Portions of the service, dubbed Apple Intelligence, are now rolling out to beta testers this week. But the system may be built on a surprise choice. A research paper from the tech giant published Monday seems to show that Apple has shunned chips from AI champion NVIDIA. Instead, it's using processors designed by Google. That's a surprise as NVIDIA controls about 80% of the market for AI chips. The research paper doesn't explicitly rule out using silicon from the firm, but its descriptions of software and hardware don't appear to fit with any NVIDIA products. Instead, Apple says it's using so-called TPU chips designed by Google for machine learning. The search titan sells access to such semiconductors via its cloud computing platform. There was no comment on the Reuters report from any of the firms involved. That marks the end of today's nightly business report. We will see you again tomorrow with more key updates. Until then, I'm Anuradha Vikramasinghe. Have a great night.